So moving on to Saturn's moons, uh, Saturn has a lot of moons um, and some of them are involved with its rings as well. So we'll talk about the rings next time. Um, but some of the very small moons actually orbit within the rings. Um, and so those are, you know, not um, regular moons. Those are most likely captured objects. Okay, and then Saturn has quite a few um, kind of medium-sized moons. Six of them are listed here. So Mimas, which is like the Death Star moon, um, Enceladus, which is our oops, ocean, like subsurface ocean moon. And then we've got Tethys, Dion, Rhea, and Iapetus. And Iapetus is really funny, like all of these moons are tidally locked, which means that the same face always faces Saturn, right? Just like our moon. And what that means is that as they orbit around their planet, there's a leading side and there's, there's a trailing side. And Saturn is interesting because it has this um, large ring system. It has, you know, basically dust in orbit around it. And so Iapetus, um, it's one of its faces is dark. Um, and it's, I'm not completely sure why that is, but I think it's its um, leading face is, is dark. So Iapetus has kind of one dark tarry side and then one um, kind of normal light side. Um, okay, so the other big moon that's listed here is of course Titan. Um, but I wanted to just highlight these kind of six medium icy moons that the book didn't really get into much detail on. Enceladus is the most interesting of these uh, for reasons we'll discuss right now. So this is the surface a little bit closer. And what we see is there's some areas that look fairly heavily cratered. And then there's other areas that look relatively smooth. And there's even these what uh, we call tiger stripes. Um, which are kind of, you know, cracks. So based on this image, uh, type in the chat, um, what can you conclude about the geologic activity on Enceladus based on this picture? Okay, so looking at Enceladus's surface features, it has these uh, stripes, the tiger stripes, which are areas of cracks that have been filled in with water. And when we look closer at those locations uh, with the Cassini mission, we saw that the, there were actually uh, geysers of water shooting into space in the vicinity of those cracks. And uh, we were able to measure the composition of the water and it turns out that it's salty water. So Enceladus must have some kind of liquid salty subsurface ocean uh, and it's you know spewing some of that water into space. And the liquid water under the surface makes Enceladus a really tantalizing science target in the Saturn system. All right, so the largest moon of Saturn is Titan. And this is um, a really weird and interesting world, another very interesting science target in the Saturn system. Um, and when we look at it in a telescope, it's not that interesting, right? It's covered with just kind of a thick haze um, that obscures its surface. Uh, but when we look through Titan's haze, uh, as the Cassini mission did here with radio, uh, you can actually see uh, lakes on its surface. So these kind of dark features are indeed liquid lakes on the surface of Titan. Uh, and Titan is a little bit different than other worlds in that its um, atmosphere contains ethane and methane, though it's mostly um, nitrogen. And that atmosphere is extremely thick because of Titan's um, you know, low surface gravity. It extends very far into space and the, the thick atmosphere leads to a high pressure at the surface that keeps this ethane and methane in the liquid form. Um, it's also the case that Titan, because it's very far from the sun, is cold, and that also contributes to ethane and methane being able to be liquids. So here's a kind of schematic of its atmosphere. There's a haze layer and then um, a thick photochemical haze. So remember, photochemical just means that there is some reaction with UV radiation uh, with any of the molecules in the atmosphere that causes some chemistry to happen in that atmosphere. So these are various hydrocarbons, um, things like carbon monoxide, and then also things that are made of hydrogen and carbon together in chains. So things like propane, um, ethane, methane, butane, um, all of those are produced in Titan's atmosphere. Um, and at these at the surface where methane and ethane is able to be liquid, um, it's potentially a part of a 
I guess you wouldn't call it a water cycle. You'd call it a methane cycle um, in which it can actually evaporate from lakes, condense into clouds and then rain on the surface. So there's some you know, possible mechanism for weathering of the surface due to that. And um, you know, we don't really know if this could be sort of the place to look for not life as we know it, but life as we don't know it. Um, life that could exist uh, based on this you know, carbon chemistry, um, but in a, in a uh, very different environment, in a place without liquid water, but with other liquid, maybe it's possible. We don't know. Um, okay, Titan also has a differentiated interior. Um, and so it has also some geological activity um, going on on its surface. Okay, um, it's, it's got um, some icy layers. So there's icy layers on Titan and then possibly a subsurface ocean. And this is another reason why we're interested in Titan. Uh, we don't know for sure whether this subsurface ocean exists there's not as much evidence for it as there is on other moons. Okay, we've landed a probe on the surface and this is what we see, a landscape that has what look like rocks, but these rocks are made of water ice. So Titan is a very strange place. The rocks are water, the water is methane, um, and the atmosphere is also made of weird hydrocarbons. Okay, so um, Titan and Mercury are similarly sized, but Mercury doesn't have any atmosphere and Titan has a very thick atmosphere. So why could this be the case? 